and I became a, a full-fledged graduate student in 1986. And um, during that time, worked very closely with two Chinese colleagues who were also Rockefeller-funded Rockefeller scholars that um, the threesome, those two scholars and myself, really put together that first RFLP map of rice, which we published in 1988. And it was a great achievement. It was a great achievement of, um, of teamwork. We learned a lot from Steve Tanksley. This was his first uh, foray into rice and into cereals because he was a tomato geneticist. And the RFLP technology was, as many of you know, is cumbersome. It's really tedious. It involved a lot of uh, uh, radioactive work. It involved um, almost a 24-hour routine that we took on in this lab. We worked day and night, and we developed this map. And it consisted of what looked like a great accomplishment in its day, 135 markers when we published it in 1988. Anyway, it was the first, and that was historic, and we were very excited. And I think my first trip to Erie was when I went to present the results of that map and that, that first set of experiments. And I remember going to Erie and thinking, um, I was, I was stunned by the number of people in diverse fields, all of whom concentrated on rice. I guess I had known that's the way it was, but I, I couldn't have imagined it. So I was excited by it, and I think people were equally excited by the work we were doing here, and there was a very good synergy, and I think that first visit was uh, the thing that cemented the relationship that would then evolve into a job opportunity when I finished in 1990.